Okay, you're welcome once again to this video, to this channel, to this channel. Okay, you're welcome once again to my channel. Now, right here is number four. We have square root of x minus square root of x minus two. Ooh, next the square root function. Hmm. Well, what is the domain of this function? To find their domains, we've done for one, two, three. If you haven't told them, it would be nice to go back to the formal videos and watch them before you come over and watch this one, right? Very nice. So over to here. Square root of x minus square root of x minus 2. We have to find the domain of this function. Well, we start with the inner square root. For the inner square root, is a new function itself, okay? For the inner square root to be, to be defined or to exist, okay, for any value of x, then we believe that the range of the radicand should be greater than or equal to zero. Remember? For a square root to be defined, the radicand, that is the number inside the square root sign, that is the radicand, should be greater than or equal to zero. Very nice, that's for the smaller square root. And for the bigger square root, again, the radicand, okay, when this is the bigger square root, so the radicand, the one in blue, should be greater than or equal to zero. As you can see like that, it even includes the smaller one. So like I said, we start from the smaller one. So we have it to be the square root of, let me use black one. We have it to be the square root of x minus two, okay, will exist if and only if x minus 2 is greater or equal to 0. So for x minus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0 simply means that x should be greater than or equal to positive 2. That is, taking the negative to the right hand side or better still, adding 2 to both sides of the inequality. So we have x should be greater than or equal to 2. With this, the inner man right here, the inner square root, will be defined. Very nice, alright? So we keep this result. That x should be greater than or equal to 2. That was for the smaller square root. Now we go back to the bigger square root. That is the square root of x minus the square root of x minus 2. Like this. Well, that is the whole question again. We finished evaluating the first with the smaller square roots. Now here, we have that for the whole of this to be defined, then this should be greater than or equal to zero. So I give it to you. x minus square root of x minus two should be greater than or equal to zero. Well here, it follows that x should be greater than or equal to this. That is square root of x minus two. Like that. Okay, so from here, we have that x should be greater than or equal to square root of x minus 2. Hmm. Is that not insane? x should be greater than or equal to square root of x minus 2. Well, this is very nice, alright? I can simply say, let's take the square of both sides. So we have x squared should be greater than or equal to x minus 2. Well, let me take you up. Take you up like this. Right here. I'm going to move everything to the left hand side and allow 0 to remain on the right of the inequality. So we have x squared should be minus x and plus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. Like this. The left hand side we have a quadratic expression. Okay. And um, unlucky enough, quite unfortunate, we can't factorize this. Hmm. And again, this doesn't have real values for x. Wow. It doesn't have real values for x because b squared is less than, is strictly less than uh, 4ac. Okay, if you check it out, b squared is negative 1 squared, that is positive 1. And positive 1 is going to be less than 4 times 1, that is 4, times c, 2, that is 8. So 1 is less than 8. So that alone leads us to complex values for x. The, the two exist, x1 and x2, very bad. But it's very nice as well. Now, it, it, it is believed that x1 and x2 will have complex values. And that is, um, the values for x1 and x2 will be, well, let's just have negative b, that's 1, 
plus square root of negative 7 over 2 and again it will also have uh, 1 minus square root of negative 7 over 2 that is if you solve this quadratic expression right here using the formula method right the quadratic formula method now this is a complex result because of square root of negative 7 like I said square of negative number doesn't exist on a set of real numbers and again this right here is also a complex result so this takes us to the complex world that is to say that the values of x x1 and x2 belong to the set of what? complex numbers Ooh. lucky enough the set of complex numbers consists of real numbers for example if you have a complex number okay let's say z it's a complex number, it is written as A plus IB, where I is imaginary and I is square root of negative 1. Okay, just stay with me, alright? Um, square root of negative 1, like this. That is, when we have the square root of a negative number, let's say square root of negative A, where A is greater than 0, negative A will be less than 0. We can, we can, um, Write this as square root of negative 1 times square root of a, alright? Where we take the square root and we multiply the radicands to have this. So we can split this to this form. Now, square root of negative 1, we don't know the value. But square root of a, we can actually evaluate it, okay? Because, like I said, negative a is such that a should be greater than 0, so that negative a should be less than 0. And this is a greater than 0, square root of negative 1. So it is the square root of negative 1 that we call the i. Okay, so it simply shows here that we have a plus square root of negative 1 b. Where this b is the square root of a number, and it's actually a real number, square root of a positive number. Like that, alright? We just compare it. Okay, so the complex number has this form. Where a and b, where a and b belong to the set of real numbers. That is what you get. a and b belongs to the set of real numbers, so the complex number is actually real numbers with together with an imaginary number so we can write that we can rewrite the set of complex numbers to be the same thing as the set of real numbers union the imaginary uh, uh so that's the imaginary sets well just this notation is not actually correct like this just forgive me but what i actually mean is that the set of complex numbers consists of a set of real numbers that is in the place of a and b with imaginary number okay the imaginary number like that I just put it in a set because this right here is your set so since our value of x belongs to a set of complex numbers the set of complex numbers consists of both real numbers and imaginary numbers it simply means that the value of x belongs to the set of real numbers union the imaginary number so the complex number swallows the real number as well with the imaginary number like i so it swallows the real number. What does it mean? It simply means that if x belongs to the set of complex numbers, that means x belongs to the set of real numbers together with imaginary values. Therefore, for any real value of x, this will be true. Wow, that's why I said this is very nice. For any real value of x, this right here will be true. In fact, check out. We have x here and we have the same x in here. Now, x minus 2 will be less than x, right? Square root of a number less than x will be lesser than x. Square root of 2 doesn't make it bigger, it makes it smaller. Square root of 9 is 3, smaller than 9. So if you have square if you have a, if you have 11 here, so 11 minus 2 is going to be 9. And square root of 9 is going to be 3. This is 11, 11. So 11 minus 3 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is true for all real values of x, alright? Now, we're solving number 4. We had the first value of x to range to start from negative to start from positive 2 to the right that is from positive 2 to infinity so we have the first value of x to be from positive 2 should belong from positive 2 to infinity and uh, here we are having that x should belong to the set of real numbers so that means that x can also belong to the set of real numbers okay that is from negative infinity to positive infinity like this. Now, to actually find the domain of the whole function, we should find the intersection of these two sets. So the intersection of these two sets is just like saying the universal set 
intersection this part because this part actually belongs here okay so the x now generally will belong to as a final result 2 to positive infinity why because this is actually a subset of this so it should start from close interval 2 to positive infinity like that and this right here is the domain of the number 4 that's it okay thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to this channel when you subscribe to this channel turn on the notification button yeah just subscribe then you wait about two seconds turn it up so that anytime i post another video you'll be notified all right and i believe this will be helpful enough okay thanks for watching once more and make sure you subscribe